something for syncing the audio? Or so you just find a common thing? I sync this with this by catching the second a minute changes. Okay. Right? So the screen and this goes with the second. I synchronize my CAN bus data with this with the second autopilot is engaged. Okay. So I get the blue icon and I get the uh, mm -hmm. autopilot engaged message and I synchronize that. And I synchronize the Insta360 with this front camera with two cars I see crossing each other okay. in, at the intersection is how I do that. Got it. All right. I also use, and you may have this technique, I have a special profile mm -hmm. for beta testing. Yep. And this has my blinker cameras turned off. This has those sort of things. So you know, it's better for beta testing. Mm -hmm. um, and just so you, you can see, we're running 12.3.6 here because we do not have 12.4 yet. Uh, we did get some new navigation data um, not too long ago, I think. So that was actually kind of good. But all right, so we are going to do and, and oh, by the way, in the profile, you get your beta waypoints, which are nice, right? You mm -hmm. don't have addresses for your you know, kids in there and right. things like that. So I usually just do FSD beta south, which makes the left turn at the unprotected left. And then uh, as I kind of get out towards the turn is when I go through my checklist of did I turn all my cameras on? Do I have my mics on? Is the power running? <laughs> is, you know, mics everything. are important. <laughs> mics are important. And actually this um, phone has acted as backup uh, audio for me before because it, in addition to recording the screen, it's actually recording our voices at a pretty low quality, but. It's a good scratch audio to use. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, okay, so as we go this direction, I try to get the navigation planner to log the turn as it just did. So I'm just going to engage it here as we go to the stop sign and we'll just get to see it do its, its stop. Now I'll walk you through, this is a low traffic time. We're at four o'clock on a Thursday afternoon. So rush hour home traffic is probably not for another half an hour. Um, we're going to have a lead car there. So that's good. So we'll have a little bit of a, he's probably going to turn right looks like. Okay, so here we are at the turn. Here's where I normally go wide on the screen. I start to pivot and there's the NHTSA stop. Here's the fence I want you to see here. You can't see anything, anything, anything. Right. A nice aggressive creep and it's wide open to the left if it goes now. And, it had a and chance. And it's gonna roll. And it's it's going. gonna roll. Yep. It's gonna roll because it's clear to the right. Oh, okay. And now that it's gotta good. stay in the left lane and it did. That was good. So it actually did. So that was a a decent two-part maneuver with a slow roll in the median. Um, the fact that you used to go to the middle lane and that car was oncoming, that was a 12.3 behavior with a pretty large gap. But did you feel the pause where you and I would have probably gone a, yep. about a second before yeah. it actually yeah, went? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But it did take off pretty good, like yeah. aggressive, not yep. aggressive, like bad aggressive, but like yep. no hesitation. Exactly. I, I like that. And this is where I, mm -hmm. I do, you know, sometimes I do the U-turn here or I just flip it around yeah. and you know, you can, I can here it's just a little quarter mile away and I can, I can bang 10 of these out yeah. in 20, 30 minutes if, if the timing is right. Sometimes I try to time this traffic so I'm not always getting wide gaps. About a mile that way, there's a stoplight that does create like a little bit of a frequency wave of traffic um, that sometimes, you know, cause Obviously, the car does great with no traffic. I mean, just like it does great driving at night, it's um, it's the decision making it has with each you know oncoming cars like that coming out. You know, how is it going to handle the the crossing traffic? Yeah, and it you know my car behaves exactly like this one right now. Does it? Yeah. yeah. So I'm used to those maneuvers. Uh, people don't understand how good it's getting. Yeah. Uh, especially if like if you don't use it a lot and don't have a lot to compare it with. It's just, uh, it's really mind blowing when you think about it. It, it. it is so good at the beginning and end of, I mean, sorry, the middle of every drive, the beginning and end, you know, it's kind of doing generic things like pulling over to the side of the road or, you know, it's not going to pull into your driveway yet, or it's not going to handle a, a, uh, a parking lot real well yet, but sometimes it does parking lots great. So I don't know how to define exactly what it knows how to do. You know what I had happen once already? Uh, with the last update, I went to the supermarket, the Publix, yep. and the car parked itself in a parking Like I, I gave it the pin of the yep. location and it actually found the parking spot and it parked itself. I was surprised. Wow. I have not had that happen yet. Um, so sometimes I'm looking through that fence for oncoming traffic just mm -hmm. to see if I can get the timing right to get a, 
Oh, and not okay. a blank one. <laughs> and then it comes out. It stops very consistently here at the stop sign. And then the slow creep. And there's the, the median and the cross, the creep limiter all posted there. All right, now we got some traffic it needs to wait for. But it's, it, it's we're, we're at a safe distance, but. We're good here, yeah. It should go now. It should. And it's going to do a roller because no cars are coming. Oh, it needs to wait. There's a car coming. Yep. It was, um, was going to go. Yeah. It felt, <laughs> Did it you felt, think it, it felt like it was going to go, but I thought it was going to just stop there. <laughs> the, I, the, I, I hit the brake and you're yeah, going to just The problem is that it, the car may, ha, uh, may well stop, but it's risky to do that. I think the nose would have been on the road. Yeah, uh, because I've seen the car like stopping at the last second. But the problem is that if you don't know, then you're putting on un un unnecessary risk. Yeah, it, you know, it might have stopped, but it might have been a quarter in the car. And if that person had been on their phone and not swerved or yeah. so many things can go wrong in that instant. Yep. Um, so that is almost the exact same scenario of the last one, except for the oncoming car was in the middle lane last time. Mm -hmm. And we were able to take the closest lane that time. There was a car very rapidly approaching at about 50 miles an hour in the in the closest lane, and it was not slowing down that mm -hmm. I felt. Um, and the fact that we had cars coming this way, I had to squeeze into the median not, and not leave my tail hanging out on mm -hmm. the other side. And you either. did it manually? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, well, you heard the... Well, you'll hear it on the camera. Oh, the, you're talking the, about this time yeah, that it happened. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 All right, so this truck is crossing, and then we'll just do a U-turn and... <laughs> that that happens, you know, and, and that's when I like to talk about safety and would it have stopped and would it not have stopped. Mm -hmm. If there's people out there driving the software, you don't don't mess around with that. Yeah, <laughs> you exactly. know, um, protect yourself, protect your car, and and do not assume that it's going to stop. Yep. It probably could have stopped. Yep. But exactly. I do, I wasn't feeling the acceleration. Now, one of the great things about having that canvas data, I'm going to be able to sync this back up, and I'm going to see the torque. Yeah. on the wheels yeah. whether or not it was slowing down before i disengaged or mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. um or whether or not it was considering and we can go back and look where the trajectory was yeah. if it was solid blue it was going but i yeah. didn't see it in real time yeah. I, I imagine you didn't either um yeah i was paying too much attention <laughs> to the actual cars coming <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right you want to do one more yeah let's do okay it. let's do one more let's do it all right end trip I usually reset it just so there's no navigation gremlins in there anybody can blame anything on. Mm -hmm. And then with this truck coming, I'm gonna get out of the way and let him go. Oh, he's coming this oh, way. Oh, he's going that way, okay. All right, and we're all lined up and we'll go. Give it a go. I see you, you have the single Stock Sing, single stock, yep. Do you I, not like that, that? I hate it. I'm and I can't <laughs> remove it. I can't put it on double. The way to do that is with profiles. I oh okay, stop, stop, stop. It's fine. It did, but good. see how he had to go around a little bit? But we're actually I don't think the nose of the car is outside. It's not, but yeah. you could tell I was in that okay, you better go, you better go, you better go. Okay, that was good. Now is it gonna wait? Okay, see how my rear end's in the in the in the lane right now? Yeah. Okay. And now he's going to come into this lane and block the view. Yeah, watch this. There's cars coming. Yep. There's one yep. making so a turn. Yep. The car should go, but it's not going to go because it, it doesn't have a good view. Yeah, and now there's a school bus coming. And it's quite an interesting scenario. So now I can't see anything. Yeah, we are now, trapped. Now you're, is the repeater there? And <laughs> wow. I can feel the cars moving the uh, actual tail of the car. Yep, we're trapped. <laughs> Yeah, because this okay. guy can't go because we're here and we can't go because he's blocking the view, so we can't and see anything. If it doesn't go now, I'm gonna maybe creep up a little bit. I'm gonna tap the accelerator. No, oh, I got another car coming. This is hard, you know. And he's. In, I'm gonna creep. Okay, now I'm tapping the accelerator, and I, I let go of the accelerator. See? There were no cars coming, but we had no way of knowing because <laughs> yeah. that that SUV was in the middle. And the car was doing the right thing by waiting. Uh, that it's just that other car was waiting on us. He couldn't see. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to solve that. I mean, obviously, I was looking through the glass yeah. of that car, which the Tesla can't do yet, look through glass. Mm -hmm. um, but that's how I made the decision to creep out, as I was looking through the glass for motion that I could see um, that I knew the Tesla couldn't. So I, that was a pretty good one. I, I, I wish I had uh, had that one with an overhead view also. Um, yeah, the, definitely a good uh, adrenaline, adrenaline boost. We yeah. got there. I mean, 
every one of these is different. It is just so crazy how three lanes of traffic and you know i know you have these in miami too this is not unique oh yeah you know, i have a says, bunch of them yeah yeah this is this is not unique and everybody's like they ought to put a traffic light at this intersection there is a traffic light one block away yeah and over the last 30 years every fatal accident that's ever happened or any accidents really have been at that stoplight hmm. rather than this intersection and it's because you give away mm -hmm. your responsibility when you go through a traffic light and if somebody runs it you're going to get hit yeah um, Totally. But that that is what it is. But <laughs> that's the unprotected left-hand turn. Now, there's one thing. I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to show you one more thing that and not necessarily focus on letting the car drive. Maybe I'll even just manually drive it. But I want to show you some measurements I've made um, with my laser rangefinder and those trees in the median. So the stated range of this B-pillar camera is 80 meters. The stated range of the forward narrow field view is 250 meters. We do not have any other car, uh, cameras that, that can look um, 90 degrees side to side. This is all we have. The front field has about 160 degrees, so there isn't anything but the B pillar that can look left and right. But 80 meters is the fourth tree. Okay. One, two, three, four. That's, that's 80 th meters. That's too close. It should look further. It, and then you get into the bagger points and photons on the CCD, yeah. and, and, and can we look further? But I want you to tell me how far you're looking. I'm looking 2,000 meters probably. Oh, yeah. I'm looking beyond the, the horizon right. line. So really. let's say this camera was 800 meters instead of 80. I'm still looking for my decision of when the gap to go is yeah. much, much further. Yeah. Which is why I'm into resolution equals range for a for a vision system, right? Hmm. You know, more pixels, you can look at the better. So this gap right here is at 500 meters right now. So if I'm going to go manually, I made that decision at five to 600 meters, not yep. the 80 yeah. that the car did. Exactly. Um, so he, that's, I think, an interesting thing because 80 <laughs> meters is right here. Yeah, I don't think there's like, to make it better than a human, I don't think it's really possible, except that a lot of humans don't know how to drive. <laughs> but like, if you're a proper good driver, uh, if the decisions are based on the limitations of the hardware not being able to see so far, then that's a problem. Yeah, and you know, you and I were talking about uh, our cyber trucks and how the the uh, the tailgate camera is you know, the only view we really have when the tonneau is closed, right? Mm -hmm. And it's hard to make the same decisions looking through that yep. camera that you do with your human eyes, just because of the way the pixels are formed and the amount they're putting in and. I even even the blinker cameras, I, you know, I, I can turn them on and, and see them, but somehow it's just not the same. Even mm -hmm. though I've tried to train myself to make decisions based off of what I see, yeah. Maybe the computer can just see faster at what is being presented, and I wouldn't doubt that. But um, it does have multiple uh, views that it can analyze in split second, uh, you know. Uh, moments, but I, I don't know. I mean, the human brain is so powerful. Also, yeah. like we don't think about many of the things we do, and they're just hey, there's a might have been one of our ADAS drivers. Honestly. Yeah, the, there's like we we do do things instinctively, yeah. right? Uh, uh, but the processing power that we have is insane. Yeah, and doing it like 30 watts too, or something ridiculous power consumption wise. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's the unprotected left-hand turn. That was great. So, <laughs> thank you for taking me on a ride on something that I've seen a million times, but we never did it together here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so guys, I hope you like this uh, short segment, uh, A Moment with Chuck. Yeah, you know, hey, I, I love the fact that, you know, people come up and want to check it out because, you know, it's nothing unique, but mm -hmm. the fact that we have seen it on video so many times and we're mm -hmm. watching Tesla work their butts off to get this right, it is kind of fun to watch it happen uh, yeah. in the space where it's happening. You know, it's funny because I have I have an unprotected left. It's actually protected that becomes unprotected, you know, with the, with lights, the, light. mm -hmm. with the cycle and it, it still doesn't do it right. And you know, in the past, they would like we would have back and forth with the with the autopilot team, but now you know it's not the same. Uh, at least it hasn't been the same for me because I'm not dedicating as much time. Yeah. But the the thing is that it's a it's a left turn that when you make it, the natural path would be in a particular place, but that place no longer is. Yeah. So uh, you know how they paint them, and uh, so that's no longer a lane. You have to kind of move over to the right. Yeah. And the car keeps 
it stays hooked to the left, which is the turning only lane to a school. So if you want to make that left and keep going straight, yeah. sometimes the car does it, but I, I want to say 90% of the time it does it wrong. Yeah, you know, when, when Elon says five to 10 less interventions in 12.4, it's situations like that that I'm actually hopeful that they're iterating on and, and can maybe work on the planner and get some of that stuff fixed better. Um, hopefully we'll see in the next few days. Uh, what the changes are yeah. and maybe on 12.5 we'll have uh, all this on our cyber trucks yeah. oh i hope so <laughs> i can't wait to be able to do this road trip with autopilot at least basic oh, autopilot just basic would be so much yeah because i put i put seven thousand miles you know uh, back in my utah trip yeah and man that was i mean at least it's a joy to drive the yeah it's like really a lot of fun to drive it's very easy to drive it is it's smooth yeah but man i wish i wish you had the autopilot at least the basic it would just make a lot of difference on on your um, I, the car, the truck is so much wider than my previous truck. I do find myself kind of creeping, not necessarily in the center of the lane. And I know auto steer mm -hmm. would, would yeah. keep me rock solid in the center. Well, well hopefully we we'll get it soon. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching and, uh, we'll catch you up on the next one. See you soon. Bye everybody. Bye. Don't forget to follow Chuck. <laughs>